At this point in learning about human evolution, you might be wondering, why is it so confusing? There's so many names, I don't know what they are. Well, I can't answer all of your questions, but let's talk about at least some of the reasons why this period in human evolution is a little confusing. Now we're finally talking about the origin of our very own genus Homo. There's a couple things we're gonna talk about. First, we're gonna talk about why it's so confusing because this is a confusing time. Then we're gonna talk about a couple of the early Homo species. Then we'll talk about the very earliest stone tools. And then lastly, we'll close out by talking about some of the common taxonomic debates in this period of time. But of course, why is it so confusing? So let's go back to our tree. Let's look at a couple different points in time and how they are different. So here, you know, a little over 5,000 years ago, for, sorry, 5 million years ago, we only have one species running around at this time. So it's, you know, not much is going on. A little bit later in time, um, just over 3 million years ago, we probably really only have one species running around, Oscillopithecus afarensis. You know, some people might argue that Kenyanthropus platyops is a thing, but it's probably just another deformed Oscillopithecus. Australopithecus afarensis. Now, later in time, oh, that's a weird place to put that line. Let's look at this one instead. Um, now we have multiple different species. We have Paranthropus boisei, Paranthropus robustus, possibly Australopithecus sediba if it's a little bit later. Then we have Homo rudolfensis, Homo habilis, Homo argraster, and Homo erectus. That is just a lot of species that could potentially all be running around Africa at the same time. So the question really is, like, why do we have multiple species of hominins at the same time? And also, like, why right now? Like, why, why now and not earlier, not later? That's kind of weird. What we think might be happening at this point in time is an adaptive radiation, similar to what you can see in Darwin's finches. So we have multiple different species of hominins doing different strategies for how to survive. So remember about Paranthropus robustus, they specialized in chewing adaptations. And now we're going to start talking about genus Homo who has different responses to how they're going to survive. And you know, these are our ancestors. Um, here we are putting some of these species into how we think they might be related. So you can see Oscillopithecus afarensis is a very key species. It's, you know, a lot of different things descend from Oscillopithecus afarensis. We also see Paranthropus aethiopicus over here. We have other Paranthropus um, being descended from it. This is the most common um, type of relationships you'll see with these species. But we also have this mess. There's, there's also a lot that we're not quite sure what's going on. And it does appear that there's a lot of different species originating at about this point in time. So you've probably seen an image similar to this before. This is called the descent of man. So we have this lineage of, you know, starting from a chimpanzee like thing, gradually getting more upright, losing our hair, starting to use stone tools, starting to use hefted weapons, and then finally us. My favorite use of this meme is when we create these other ones. So, you know, showing us going back to stooping at our computers or, of course, you know, the lightsaber. But as we just looked at with all of those other species, this linear depiction is not a good way to show human evolution. Instead, what we think is going on is it's more of a bush. We have many different lineages, some of them coexisting at the same time, probably because they are taking different strategies with which to which to survive. And we see this a lot. Right after the dinosaurs were wiped out, we had an adaptive radiation of mammals because there were new niches. Whenever we see adaptive radiation, it's generally associated with conquering a new habitat or climate change. Something has happened to clear the environment and leave different spaces open in the ecology around you. So can you explain? Is descent of man a good way to understand human evolution? And what is a better analogy?